we thank you because we know that you are indeed in our midst. We bless and appreciate you. Thank you for every seed that we will be sowing today, Lord. We will reap the harvest Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for ministering to me. Thank you for your people that will hear your word. Thank you because we will not only be hearers, we will be doers. Amen. What we say today, Lord, we will actually practice it so that we will see the fruit in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> all right. First of all, I just want to ask us all to kindly sit down. <laughs> and let's just go straight into the water. Time is well spent. Um. Thank God for for the message that we've been hearing little by little. I think Pastor has put a pause on that one for now. But I just want us to think, continue thinking along that line. And um, what I'm going to encourage us, the word I'm going to encourage us with today, we can think, also think along that side when we talk about little by little. Amen. Um, it's just a principle that I really want to share with us today that I think will really bless us. It's very practical. Very, very practical. You know, like I just said, I really pray that we will practice this because it's something that we need to really look deep down in ourselves and see where we can make the necessary corrections. Amen? Amen. So, um, let's go back to my first slide. <laughs> um, Today, I just want to share with us how to look after someone's property, looking after somebody's property. All of us here, it's either we are in charge of something, maybe we are in charge of our homes, husband in charge of wife, mother in charge of her children, manager looking after somebody's business, somebody looking after somebody, um, someone's shop, maybe you are an employee. I'm an employee, for example, in my place of work. Yeah, I've been, students have been put under my care, so I have to make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. My manager does not come to be checking. Sometimes, she, when she tells me, Floris, I did work by your class today, I'm like, okay. You know, she said, you never know when I walk around to check on you guys. So, really, it's looking after someone's property. How well do we look after what has been given us to manage? Amen? Amen. So, I would like us to go to Luke chapter 16. We have a very good example of what it looks like <laughs> and how well do people manage other people's property. So, as we go through this, I just want us to picture ourselves as the boss and also view ourselves in the place of the manager. Because sometimes we can be either one or the other. Amen? So quickly, I'm going to start by reading Luke 16 from verse 1. It says, Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. Yeah? Wasting. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. <laughs> okay. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig. Is he only realizing that now? <laughs> and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do <laughs> so that when I lose my job, people will come, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 800 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 400. Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told them, take your bill and make it 800. <laughs> the master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly, shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than other people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that 
when it is gone, you will be welcomed into internal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with, with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So, here comes in a little. <laughs> we can walk past little by little. Right. So, we've all seen that story of how the manager dealt with the business of his boss. Yeah. Was he good? You can see the negative things already popping out. He schemed. He was very crafty. Also, so... Quickly, I just wanted us to look at the definition of the word manager. So, first one said, a person who controls and manipulates resources and expenditures as of a household. So remember, as women, we are managers of our home. So you can be somebody working for Iceland, you know, you're in charge of money, you control, you man. Are we not good with that, women? <laughs> Sorry, men. <laughs> Um, can also be a person who manages. So maybe you have a team of people that are under you. So like for some people working in care, you have a lot of people that you manage. In the morning, you send them, go to this place, go to that home. You have to make sure they get there, they get there on time. You're following up. Amen? They are accountable to you as how they go through their day. Also, one who manages another's property, finances or other affairs. So personal assistance. You know, those that are peers managing for other people. So just to give us a, so at least we all know how we fit in. So one way or another, we fit into these categories. Amen? So my question is, did the manager look after his master's business very well? So already all of us are saying no. I'm not expecting any yes. Amen? So I say, what kind of negative characteristics does the manager demonstrate? Give me some. Why give mine? Oh, it's up already. Thank you. <laughs> right. Is there any more that's not here? He was lazy because he only realized, oh, all of a sudden I don't have. Ah, then he was full of pride. I don't want to be begging. Okay. So I did say fraudulent. How did he think about that quickly? That oh, I, what he did was so smart. Well, that's a foolish way of being smart. <laughs> Went to all the people that owed his master. If you owed him a thousand, break it down. Just give me eight hundred. You know, very dishonest, unreliable, irresponsible, bribery. Because in a way, that was bribery. Instead of them paying him the full money, they gave him half. You know, gained favor well, you know, not in the right way. Yeah. Very unwise. He was not wise. He only realized at the last minute that, oh, I'm going to be left with nothing. What was he doing all this while? He never built up little by little. He never built up his reputation little by little. No integrity at all. Don't we do that sometimes? It's so easy to switch. Say, oh, nobody is looking. I can just, I can compromise. Compromise big time. Nothing. No vision. No gold. Sorry. No. <laughs> yes. No gold. Am I thinking of gold? Anyway, we need to be refined. <laughs> he was not. He was not ready to be refined. <laughs> Amen. But yes. So it just gives gives us that that space that gap to be thinking wherever we are at the moment in whatever we are. The Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it diligently. Are we doing diligently wherever we are at the moment? Are we dealing, or are we waiting for for somebody to see us before we start doing? We need to be thinking. That's why I say what we are saying today is very practical, because we can see ourselves into this. I say to my colleagues at work, sometimes there is something I'm doing at the moment, and I'm not being paid for it. And in the morning when I come in, I normally have my 25 minutes. You know, free time and cool down before I go into lesson. But at the moment, I don't have that. So they start to say, Oh, Floris, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I say, You know, I'm going to do it until they ask me to stop. Because I can easily say, Oh, other people are not doing it. Yeah. So I might as well just relax. Yeah. And it's so easy to follow a bad influence. Yeah. 
You know, not because other people are not doing. You should, we should be doing what we know we should do and do it best. Amen. This manager never displayed any of those things. So let's quickly go to Leviticus chapter 19. Um, I want somebody to read, please, from verse 11, quickly. Leviticus 19, 11. I'm expecting the children to be following us as well. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. And you shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you perform the name of my God. Okay, verse um, 13. You shall not speak to your neighbor nor rob him. Rob him. Amen. The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all night and till morning. Amen. Thank you. Right. Anyway, my, my, my stress, my focus is going to be on verse 13. Do not defraud your neighbor or rob him. We don't have any records that tells us that the the, the manager's boss robbed him. He robbed his boss. Yeah. How many times have we done that? Dishonesty. You know, somebody gives us money to keep, to keep this money. Uh, you know, where I come from, we are so good with that. I remember when I went for holiday in 2012 and I gave somebody money to go buy ice cream. By the time the person came back, oh, I used some of the money to buy for this person to buy, I'm like, why did you not ask me? Did I say, you know, it's not a giving that I had an issue with, but it's just the way in which the person did it. It's like, oh, I have right, it's your money, I will use it. You know, without no form of remorse. So, she didn't look after my money well. You give some people money to keep or go put it in the bank, the next, you know, in, a, in another few weeks, you check the money is not there. What did, oh, I borrowed the money, I went to do this, I went to do that. Are we not familiar with these things? Am I the only one that's experiencing it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> or to build a house. Yes, with my own money. We've had those stories so many times. So that's not, that's not looking well. That's not, that's not good management of somebody's property. <laughs> See a story there, Mark Collins. So, do not defraud. He was fraudulent with no remorse. You know, if only he, he was properly accountable to say, look, boss, like you say, I, I have not done well. Do unto me whatever you want to do. Instead of, I think that would have helped him. The man would have seen that he was really sorry for what he has done. You know, but it just made things worse. So, we should not be finding ourselves in, in, in positions like this. So, quickly to Mark chapter 10. Let's go quickly to Mark, to Mark 10. Verse 19. Somebody quickly read, please. Amen. So, you know, that scripture complements what we've just said. No, no form of defrauding should be found in our spirit. Amen? Amen. <laughs> because these are things that we do so easily, so easily without realizing that we have actually, we've stolen or we've been fraudulent. We have not done deals properly, people in business. Those of us in business, you know, the Bible says, we should do business, but we have to do business properly. Because we don't want to bring money that's not right. Because a lot of people are fraudulent and then they bring the money to church. <laughs> Say, God, we bless the money. And you have some pastors, sorry, you have some pastors that are aware of some of these things and, and people bring the money into church. Instead of, you know, us telling the people that, you know, you have to deal right. 
not just taking the money. We need to be one another's keeper. We, you know, like we were just saying, yeah, I can cover your shame, but I should be able to correct you if I know that what you're doing is not right. So really, we, sh we need to walk. We don't want to have characteristics like we just saw. You know, somebody calls Dickie Michaels, and we don't want to say, ah, he deals fraudulently. He's not a man of integrity. He's very unwise in the way. Seriously, you want somebody to, hmm, that one is a strong man. He's wise. He's a man of his word. That's what we want. Amen? Yeah. Right, moving on. Thank you very much. Moving on. First Corinthians 6. We are there. Just want somebody to quickly read verse 8. It says, Give yourself to everyone and do this to your brother. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> now talking about, you know, we've said out in the world. Now talking about church, if we want to apply that into church, yeah. don't we find those things in church? You are very desperate and your brother, your sister, bold. You say, I didn't give up. I borrowed. I lent you the money. Yeah, you borrowed it from me. Then when it's time, oh, why are you asking me? You, know, you, you, have, you come next Sunday, you pretend as if you did not see the sister. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see the brother. Or your attitude is just, you know, mm. that's not a good character. You've not, we, you know, it's better to say, oh, sis, I'm sorry, you know, that thing that we said. Instead of making the person feel guilty as if, ah, okay, what, what am I going to say now to this sister? Already the person is making you feel so guilty as if you did wrong. That's manipulation. The guy was manipulated, very manipulative. <laughs> We should, we should not be having that kind of that. That's why Paul dealt with it in the outside. Now he said, yeah, you do it to yourselves. Lying to one another. If I'm giving you my word, it's my responsibility to say, sorry. In all of this communication, the guy messed up because he did not communicate. So communication is very, very important. We, we say this right across in the home, in marriage, especially when it comes to finances. Yeah. Many homes are broken because of money. Yeah. yeah, it's not proper accountability. Instead of saying, ah, honey, this money is not enough, for, so we should not send this home. Instead, the woman will, will go behind the man's back. Sorry, ladies, I have to be truthful, even though I'm a woman. Yeah, go behind the man's back, ah, still send the money. Then there is no money to eat. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a giver, I'm a promoter of giving. But I remember, you know, when my late husband so rest in peace, when we used to, my husband used to love my family so much more than, <laughs> I would tell him, you can't love, Sister Victoria, you can't love my family more than myself. <laughs> and then, you know, they so know that I will give, or I will give when it is necessary. Yeah. He will just, as soon as they demand, he will just be giving. I say, look now. And the thing is, they will come back to me to say, thank you, we got the money. Oh <laughs> so that's how I will know that he has given them like, hmm. You know, I keep saying, you can't love them more than I do. I just really want us to work together when it comes to that. So communication is key. Going back, if only he had gone and spoken to his boss, said, look, I have not done anything with what you gave me. Please, I'm sorry. The guy will say, okay, maybe I'm going to reduce your, your salary. It will give you maybe a, you know, a just punishment. I'm not sacking. But he didn't do none of that. So, you know, we need to communicate to one another. If I promise you and I didn't do it, I need to come back to say, sorry, and instead of when I see you, I'm turning my back. That's not the end right. We are not walking in integrity. We are not walking, you know, with our words. Amen? So... Now, I was going to ask, if we want to really evaluate ourselves well, how well do we look after what has been entrusted to us? Remember I asked that question before. Yeah. Yeah. How well? Because going back, you know, as I said, we can't overlook our message of little by little. If we want to get to where we want to get to, 
most of us are going to be owning our own business. How well do we want people to run our business? Yeah. When we are not there, maybe you're traveling for a week yeah. or two. What's going to happen by the time you come? Shop closed? Shop is closed? The person has gone with your money? Or there is all manner of excuses? Well, start with us. It's that seed. You know, the Bible says, do unto others as you wish that it could still be done to you. Yeah. So, wherever we are at the moment, in our places of work, whatever has been entrusted to us, we are not doing it well. We don't expect to get it back. You know, sometimes when we are not good in church, pastor always says to us, I never sow this seed yeah. to my senior pastor. And I say, well, <laughs> I always say, pastor, you know, I'm sorry, I know you didn't sow the seed, and there is no way you should. He always tells us that, say, I never, he's so confident, like Paul will confidently say things, you know. We need to sow a good seed. Because how painful would that be if you've had all your labor, all, we, we all know how we've sent things back home. How people have messed up with that stuff. Everything people have worked for, some people have, are living in depression. Because everything they've worked for, people have messed it up. We don't want to be those agents of mess that will mess other people's businesses. You don't want to be the wife that will mess up your husband's money. Neither the husband that, you know, will mess up, you know, your wife's finances. We have to be good managers in every area. We have to be good managers managing our children well. So I was just thinking, if we were in the master's position, what other actions would we have taken? That's why I'm doing it the two way around. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's what we just do. Or put them in jail. <laughs> put them in jail. Yeah. You know, so goes back to what I said before. What will we expect from someone if we are in trust? So vice versa, yeah. forward and backwards. So, in view of that, what will be our action plan? Because as I said, we find ourselves in many of these positions right now. Yeah. What's the way forward? What changes do we need to make? In whatever, in whatever way, whatever positions we find ourselves. Changes to make in our decision, our thinking. You know, I live in a house. Most of us, we have this attitude, you're living in somebody's house, yeah. oh, it's not my own, so I'm not going to make it. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. I tell people, you are living there now at the moment, make it nice. You know, bless my late mom. Whenever we are leaving somebody's house, my mom will make sure we come back, we clean. I'm like, ah, we come and clean. You know, we will clean. My mother will even paint. Many of us don't do that. Instead, you, you, you move into some places. The place is so messed up. The landlord comes back. The, he has to do We believe that we should not be found among That's people right. that are doing such That's things. Right. We look after people's houses very well. If you are a landlord and you come and somebody has damaged your property, yeah. will you be happy? No. Looking after somebody's property. So thinking. This has to do, it has to do with our thinking, our mindset. Say, so if it in every situation, if it was mine, what will I do or what would I expect? Now we need to make the decision to be responsible. We should be forward thinking. We think like this. The, the manager never thought. He was never thinking for the way forward. He was just looking for quick fixes. That's why the only thing that came to him was evil. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay, let me just go and talk. And the people themselves, we are, they were stupid. Because they too we are they too we are corrupt. Because they didn't want to pay the man's money full. You know, they just agreed, okay, ah, it was one thousand now. He said give me eight hundred. Just paid it. We need to take positive initiatives. Whether one is watching, I keep going over this, whether one is watching on us. He didn't need to wait for, for his boss to be there, to be watching over him before he performs. The Bible says, whatever you're doing, do it diligently. For again, he says, I am coming and I will reward those that have worked diligently. So in a place of work, sometimes we are expecting promotion. We are angry that they've not promoted us. 
Have we been diligent? We are complaining in our, you know, in our homes, in our marriages, in every area of our lives. We are responsibilities placed upon us. But have we been diligent? What about in the house of God? Let's bring it down. Are we diligent? Are we diligent with the word of God? Are we diligent with what God has placed in our hands? Yeah. Are we diligent overlooking after one another? Yeah. Do we think ahead? Amen. Well, let me think for this person. Because some people don't think. And some, some of us, we don't like it when people think for us. Pastor always thinks for me and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. You know. But it's good because it shows the Bible says we should not be interested in our own business only. We need to be interested in other people. So the same way we, we sow the seed, the same way we are interested in other people's businesses, that's how other people will watch over our business. That's right. Amen. So that's why I'm saying this is a practical application that we can apply in every area yeah. of our lives. We need to remove the form of complaint. We are too, sometimes we are too laid back. In church, we can be laid back, especially when our number is like this. The Bible says the day of the Lord can come when, when we least expect. What if God just pours souls upon us like this? We're going to be in, in disarray. Because we won't know how to handle. We think, oh, it's only us. We are comfortable. No. We always should be as if. Always think. As, that's why we are waiting in faith. Because faith is the answer. We don't see. We can't touch. But we know it is. So we cannot be complacent. In every area of our life, in business, not because you are the owner of your own business, so you can be complacent. Today I'm coming to market today, tomorrow I am not coming. Sorry, people, I'm just speaking as I'm left. You know, even if it's my own business, I should still be faithful. Because if I'm not faithful to my own self, why would somebody be faithful to me? It's little by little now. We, should, we need to be alert. We need to be sensitive. This guy never, never thought about none of this. And the only thing he thought of was quick fix. He did not plan. He did not plan for his future. Everything just dawned on him suddenly. Suddenly. We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. We don't want to be like the foolish virgins. Ten of them we are given a task. Five we are ready. The other five we are not. We need to be ready. In our, in, in our work with God, we need to be ready. Because, you know, in as much as we don't want to die, the Bible promises us long life. But yet still, it says, make the most of every opportunity that we have. Because we don't know. We don't know. So I really want to encourage us, um, encourage us today as we... I'm going to come now to the end, because our time is well spent. I might pick this up next week. But I really want to encourage us to, to live here today thinking about, you know, what we have shared and apply it to our lives. Life will never be the same again. Amen? Amen. 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 So in ending, I just want to take us to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6. From verse 5 to 8. This is a principle that we find so hard sometimes to walk by. It says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you will obey Christ. Sometimes we want to obey God, but we are very disobedient at work. Yeah. We are disobedient in church. Say, uh, who are you, small boy? I, I knew the Lord before you. Yeah. But the Bible says we should not allow anybody to look down on our youth because God is not concerned. It's who gives themselves to God is who God is using anyway. That's, that's why Jesus left Jerusalem because people knew him as, as, as the carpenter. Oh, he's the carpenter's son. That's why they were not experiencing miracles. Because people knew if you, if you know me for what you know me, then you have lost. I keep saying it to people. You need to forget about my past right. and see what God is doing in my life. Amen. That's how we need to see people. Yeah. So the same way, like, we cannot have respect for God. When he has told us that we need to have respect for authority, then we go to the place of work. The manager says one thing, then once they turn their back, we are doing another. No. 
We are not walking in integrity. Amen? It says, obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if we were serving the Lord, not men. So even though we are serving men, but we are serving as if, as if it's unto God. Because God is watching us wherever we are. He said, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he has done. Whether he is slave or free. Obviously, there's the beat for the master. So, just comes back to whatever we are doing. Serving, especially in church, sometimes we are not happy about some things. But that does not stop us. We have to be an example. In the place of work, sometimes we come in, we are disgruntled, but you just say, you know what, my day is going to work regardless of. The Bible says we lay aside those things that can easily entangle us. So really, I just want us to leave us. You know, we can go back, read all the scriptures. The word of God is there. It's for teaching, it's for reproof, it's for doctrine, it's for everything. It guides us. I really want to encourage us today that as we go, we will really put these things into. If we have been laid back in our places of work, in our homes, in our relationship with people, in every way, you know, God is able to pick us back up. We have to make the decision to change. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord.